Olá, galerinha, como vocês estão hoje? Espero que vocês tenham tido aí um ótimo final de semana. Para alguns, as aulas estão voltando porque estavam de férias, outros estão saindo de férias. Espero que vocês estejam todos bem. Bom, gente, hoje, na aula de hoje, o professor Carl ele vai falar sobre engenharia química. E não se preocupem, vocês não vão usar o, o Tinkercad, vocês vão assistir o professor. Então, olha a, a, a instrução que eu vou dar para vocês, tá? Vocês vão assistir o professor fazendo o experimento dele. Depois que vocês assistirem isso, vão anotando como, fa como vai fazer, quais os ingredientes que, tá, que ele está usando. É tudo coisa que vocês têm em casa, tá? É, e aí, depois vocês vão fazer isso, vocês vão gravar um vídeo, tá? Um vídeo curto. Não se preocupem, gravar um vídeo curto, se identificar por e-mail e mandar esse vídeo para mim, tá? Para eu mostrar para o pro professor Carl e para a Camila. Gente, esse é um, esse é um material muito importante para a admissão de, de vocês na universidade. Isso conta muito na hora de vocês conseguirem bolsas, de vocês conseguirem ser admitidos dentro das universidades. Então, fazem, façam os vídeos em casa ou amanhã ou na quarta-feira, ou, ou sei lá, no final de semana, manda esse vídeo para mim, para eu mostrar para o professor Corey pra, e para a Camila, tá bom? Gente, mantenha os, os microfones desligados, same drill de sempre. Microfones desligados, tem alguma dúvida? Liga o microfone, converse com o professor Corey, vocês todos já sabem quem é o professor Corey, um professor muito bacana e que vocês gostam muito. E se não tiver vontade ainda de conversar com ele, manda uma mensagem no chat privado que eu, eu respondo todas as questões, tá bom? Uh, então, eu só quero elogiar alguns estudantes que tenham me mandado aí, eles, alguns estudantes construíram a, a ponte que vocês fizeram no Tinkercad uh, com palito de picolé, com macarrão, então eu só quero elogiar esses estudantes. Os estudantes aí que estão fazendo o extra tutorial do, do Arduino também, parabéns. Tá bom? Então, muito obrigado. Vou parar de falar que eu vou deixar agora a mágica acontecer. Thank you very much, professor. Thank you for one more day. No problem at all. No problem at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. So, again, most of you already know me by now. Um, but, again, for those who don't, um, my name is Carl Myers. And I'm the engineering project tutor for study groups network of international study centers in the UK and Europe, which I've always been forgetting to say, okay? Um, so my um, academic and professional background is in the fields of civil, electrical, mechanical, electronic, and robotics engineering, and also computer science. Right, so during today's session, I will give a brief introduction of chemical engineering and why you need to, well, why you should choose to study this engineering discipline. As you've just um, heard, well, heard from my introduction, this isn't one of my main areas, but what you will find, um, no matter what engineering discipline you will choose, you will see that they all merge together in some way, okay? And with me, um, when studying mechanical engineering, you study something called material science, which is what merges into um, chemical engineering, okay? So I'm going to give a brief introduction to chemical engineering and why you should choose to study this engineering discipline, as I've just said. I will give you some examples of the careers you can pursue with a degree in uh, uh, chemical engineering. <laughs> and of course, the most exciting part is where we, well, where we are going to make our own plastic using milk um, more specifically, the protein within the milk called casein or casein plastic, okay? Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to um, perform the demonstration like we usually do. It's not going to be fully interactive. And the reason for this is um, I couldn't guarantee that you would be able to um, um, acquire or get hold of, if you like, um, the um, most important equipment which is the personal protective equipment, namely likes of goggles, gloves, masks, and that sort of thing. And I would never, ever ask you to do anything unless I can guarantee your safety. Again, we're only going to be using household items, um, but the items that we're going to be using are still acids, i.e. vinegar. And if that goes in your eyes, it will seriously hurt. And, and moreover, it may damage your eyesight. So we'll do it a little bit differently, but um, I will, we'll talk about that a little bit more later on, okay? So let's begin. And again, I'm gonna kick it off with a question, okay? 
So what is chemical engineering? Okay, it sounds really, uh, really, really scary, <laughs> chemical engineering, but um, essentially chemical engineering, it's a branch of engineering concerned with design, construction, and operation of machines and plants that perform chemical reactions to solve practical problems or make useful products, okay? You won't only just be um, involved with the machinery that actually creates um, the, um, the, um, the product or the chemical reaction. You will actually be involved in designing the actual um, chemical reaction itself to make the product, okay? So chemical um, engineers transform the raw materials into useful, innovative products for public and commercial consumption. The chemistry background of the discipline allows the engineers to, do, to get the most out of the raw elements, for example, metals, gases, um, polymers, or of creating polymers, which again we'll talk about a little bit more later on, by um, creating fuels, drugs, and construction materials, for example, plastic. Um, the, sorry, the engineering component is concerned with the methods that enable the products to be created from these natural resources. It can be said that chemical engineering allows the practical application of chemistry to occur, okay? So chemical engineers often collaborate with chemists as their skills tend to complement one another. However, chemists are trained solely in the theoretical understanding of chemistry. But engineers ensure that chemical theory is implemented in everyday life to solve problems. Therefore, they allow the advancements in chemistry to exist outside of the lab standard they are generated in. Like all engineers, chemical engineers use math, physics, uh, sorry, math and physics to solve technical problems and are trained in economics, business practice, environmental factors and ethics, as well as chemistry. The difference between chemical engineers and other, engin uh, other types of engineers is that they apply knowledge of chemistry in addition to other engineering disciplines. As I've already explained, they not only design the, um, the chemical reactions to make the products, but when them products are actually put into them um, into production, they also design the, um, the mechanical elements, um, the electrical elements, basically to perform that chemical reaction to make the product. Okay, chemical and for this reason, chemical engineers sometimes uh, are called sometimes universal engineers because their scientific and technical masters, mastery is so broad. You can consider a chemical engineer to be a type of engineer who knows a lot of science. Um, well, they would need to know a lot of science. Another perspective is that a chemical engineer is a practical chemist, as I've already explained, where they start in a lab, much like uh, scientists, yet pro pro progress through the design and implementation of a full-scale process. It's maintenance and methods of testing and improving it. Again, um, they will not only be involved in just the chemical reaction itself, designing the chemical reaction itself, but they will actually design the, um, the machinery to produce the product from that chemical reaction. Okay, so why should you choose to study chemical engineering? Again, um, chemical engineers acquire a wide variety of skills, as I've already explained. Chemical engineers have a technical knowledge of chemistry, biochemistry, engineering, material science, and information technology. And with this, they also know about economics, management, safety, and the environment. And they hone these skills in sophisticated scientific experimentation, methodology, and are taught skills in the latest developments in computing and large-scale pilot plants. So 
essentially the computing that they actually need. They, um, they go into the realms of computer engineering where they develop um, the uh, GUIs to actually monitor the actual um, chemical reactions as they're taking place um, and large scale pilot plants. So they will actually develop an experiment or well, uh, an experimental plant where um, the chemical reaction will take place and then they can monitor the um, the actual product that um, that is produced from this and then be able to adapt the actual um, plant before it's rolled out into mainstream okay the multiple um, the multidisciplinary skills and knowledge you'll gain in a chemical engineering degree program will give you the solid base you need to solve complex engineering problems and this will give you a big picture perspective flexibility and adaptability which are all hugely key components of career success employability i'm sure everybody has have, um, who's who's attended these classes with me has heard me harp on about employability across all engineering disciplines and this is exactly the same with chemical engineers um, chemical engineers are employed across employed sorry across a wide range of business by both large and small companies and again due to the rapidly expanding technology sector and the huge growth in environmental initiatives chemical engineers are in huge demand across all of these industries just think of plastics and the massive effect they are having on our environment it's chemical engineers who are working on this problem to develop not only a replacement for the plastics that we're using but how to dispose of the plastics that are already here okay and um, there's some major advancements that they're actually doing um, in the disposal of these plastics um, in microorganisms but that will actually eat the plastics amongst many many others so it's really really interesting um, even graduates who choose not to accept jobs in the industry are highly employable in other areas because they are experienced at solving problems and have excellent analytical and management skills and due to this chemical chemical engineering graduates go on to uh, can go on to successful careers in finance consultancy or scientific journalism amongst many many others okay extremely high paying jobs and starting salaries again this is the same with all engineering disciplines um, and again this may not be your main reason and it certainly wasn't mine but um, to uh, you know the main reason for working is to earn money to live uh, as we all know and according to payscale.com entry-level chemical engineers in an average of between 50,000 and 65,000 sorry 50,000 and 65,000 dollars a year wow and this is just a starting salary in fact this salary will rise rapidly with experience and this is reflected in the average salary for all chemical engineers which is between eighty thousand dollars and a hundred and twenty thousand dollars per year again wow uh, in fact chemical engineers this was a real shock to me this um chemical engineers aim more on average than any other types of engineer um which was again a huge shock to me and definitely more and science, their scientists counterparts okay uh, chemical engineers can change the world okay I've already explained one way that they could actually change the world by disposing of the plastics that are a major scourge in our environment at the moment um, chemical engineers work to improve the quality of people's lives okay most of the items we use every day have needed chemical engineers to produce them um, for example the clothes that we wear, the food that we eat, the water that we drink, um, virtually everything that we use, a chemical engineer has been involved in, in, in its production or its cleaning or any, any of the above, okay? They are working to save the environment, again, by developing alternate technologies to combat acid rain, lead pollution, 
and ultimately the greenhouse effect okay so what are the possible routes you can follow with a degree in um, chemical engineering okay i've only actually selected two of these but two of these are like the main um the main um places where people are actually looking okay so the first being petroleum engineering okay petroleum engineering is a field of engineering uh, concerned with the activities related to the production of hydrocarbons which can either be crude oil or natural gas okay so this can be um anything from actually which i'll go into in a second um just retrieving the crude oil okay so um adapting the um pumping stations uh sorry the uh, the wells to actually um, pump the crude oil out or the gas um or actually in the refining of the um of the crude oil so you can actually um, produce diesel you can produce petrol or gasoline if you may call it that um and other useful um products for example tar which you use for the roads which is a byproduct of um the refining process okay um again a petroleum engineer is involved in nearly all stages of oil and gas field evaluation development and production as i've already explained their aim is to drill for hydro hydrocarbons in the most efficient way and to resolve any operating issues um, petroleum engineers can also be responsible for using new drilling tools, techniques, and getting the most out of underperforming or, or older wells. Throughout the entire extraction process, petroleum engineers are tasked with reducing the effect of drilling on the environment. Okay, um, I don't know if any of you are all familiar with the, um, the term fracking okay uh, it's something that's actually happening in the uk at the moment and it's where they pump um water underground which actually forces this is very a very loose description by the way um and it forces the natural gas um to the surface so it can be extracted um and uh, again petroleum engineers will be involved in this um and a, a major consideration for fracking is it actually causes um, um earthquakes okay so it's a way of the, they're actually involved in a way of actually reducing this impact on the environment so it doesn't cause earthquakes essentially okay and the next one is environmental engineering okay environmental environmental engineering is a professional engineering discipline that takes from a broad takes from broad scientific to topics like chemistry biology ecology geology hydraulics hydrology uh, microbiology and mathematics major mouthful that, to create solutions that will protect and also improve the health of living organisms and improve the quality of the environment environmental engineering is the application of scientific and engineering pr principles to improve and maintain the environment to protect human health natural uh, nature's beneficial ecosystems and improve environmental related enhancements of the quality of human life as i've already explained um they're actually developing uh, microbio uh, microorganisms to actually eat the plastics that are in the environment now and um, they're developing new plastics um, or new um, procedures to make plastics so they're biodegradable um uh, well biodegradable um but not too biodegradable where the the products that they enclose will not last or the plastic will degrade really really quickly um, i won't go on about that too much um so environmentally engineers devise solutions for wastewater management so again um adding chemicals to our waste products um again from the toilets and that sort of thing so they add chemicals to that so they can uh, remove um the nastiness away from it so then that water the water byproduct from that can then be moved or transferred right way back into the environment um, they also um, focus on air pollution control recycling waste disposal and public health okay amongst again amongst many many others they design municipal water supply and industrial wastewater treatment systems again as i've already descri described 
and designed plans to prevent waterborne diseases and improve sanitation in urban, rural and recreational areas. Okay, again, bit of a mouthful that, um, but the uh, chemical engineers are integral to our daily lives. Okay, they're involved with nearly all aspects of everything that we actually, um, everything that we use on a daily basis, from the water we drink again to the clothes that we wear to everything. So, chemical engineers are massively valuable and massively in demand. Okay. So, in conclusion, choosing to study engineering of any discipline, okay, in my opinion, is and will continue to be, you've all heard this before, I'm sure, the best decision you can make, okay? You will enjoy a massively varied and fulfilling career, and with the knowledge that you're making a difference, however large or small, okay? So, thanks for listening to me on that side of things. So, now we're going to move on to the interactive demo. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll stop sharing my screen now. So you can see a big picture. You should be able to see a big picture of me now. Um, can I, Diego, can you see uh, my big picture now? Hopefully. Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to be making today, we're going to be making something called casein plastic. Again, it's not going to be um, a fully interactive demo. Um, basically, let me just raise this up so you can see me. Again, because I couldn't actually guarantee um, that you could all get hold of the most important equipment, which is the personal protection equipment. All right. Um, the paramount thing when you're starting your university or your academic careers or your professional careers, it's paramount that you are safe. Okay, throughout, and this is not just um, your employer or your um, lecturer's responsibility, this is your responsibility as well. So, the PPE that we're going to be using today are safety goggles, okay, because again, we're only going to be using household objects for this, household materials, but they are still acids, for example, um, vinegar, okay, it's still an acid, all right. Um, so, it's really important that you protect your eyes because not only will it hair really 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 bad but it's also got the potential to actually damage your eyesight as well okay the next thing that we're going to be using is a um i'm using a lab coat or any sort of um um overall will do okay again this isn't only just to protect your clothing okay if i was using a um a stronger acid than this um it actually gives me um that Added, added layer of protection and also we have something called push buttons okay and um, this is so you can easily just rip it off and throw it to one side okay um, the next thing we're going to be using well, is gloves again massively important all right especially when you're using the likes of acids and that sort of thing so you use PVC gloves and um, which is also a polymer right and one thing which is optional that I will be using um, or maybe using is a face mask like this one. Okay, it's not essential for this because you won't be uh, there won't be any sort of nasty fumes. But I will warn you for when you actually do this yourself at home, it absolutely stinks. Okay, and I've got a really really weak stomach, so um, if it gets to the point where I need to put the mask on, I'll put the mask on. Okay, because the last thing you want to be seeing is me heaving everywhere. Okay, right. So, <laughs> so um, obviously you're not going to be able to do this yourself, but um, please um, just take note of what I'm going to be doing, and have a go at this yourselves. All right, and take recordings of it, and send send it them to us. Um, this is going to be massively valuable to you. Not not only um, do I want to see it. Um, I'll, I'll digress. I'm not going to digress from this in a second. Not only do I want to see it, but it's massively value, valuable for yourselves, um, for portfolios, for joining, uh, for when you, uh, you're applying for university to show that you're actually interested in the subjects and you're, you're actively doing it yourselves at home. Okay. Um, so, um, have you got anything to add to that, Diego? Or Yes, I'm just going to double warn the security, the safety stuff. Yeah, uh, yeah. Galerinha, então vocês anotaram aí os equipamentos que o professor Carl está usando 
Por favor, gente, a hora que vocês estiverem manuseando todos esses equipamentos, são, vão ter coisas que vocês usam em casa, mas usem aí a, a luva, todo mundo eu acho que tem aí a luva, se não for é uma coisa super simples de achar. Põe uma camiseta velha para não manchar alguma uma blusa, alguma camiseta, não faça sem camisa. É, máscara, acho que todo mundo tem alguma máscara no rosto, então vamos usar a máscara, tá bom? E aí vamos tomar os maiores cuidados, os mais cu profundos cuidados possíveis, gente, por favor, tá bom? E aí, como o professor pediu, gravem isso, mandem pra gente, e não só pra ficar aqui no, no arquivo, pro professor Carl V, ou pra Camila, mas pra ficar no portfólio de vocês, que é muito importante, gente. Eu tô vendo aqui os estudantes que estão aplicando pras universidades esse ano, e os estudantes que têm portfólio estão ganhando aí muitas bolsas, tá? Umas chances, assim, que os estudantes não, que não têm portfólio não estão ganhando, tá bom? Então, vamos lá. Ok, professor, go ahead. Thank you very much, thank you. Right, again, so what we're actually going to be making here, we're going to be making something called... Um, one second, let me just get rid of this. Not on the screen. We're going to be making something called casein plastic. Okay, and to do this, we're going to be making it out of just general household items. Okay, and the items that we're going to actually be using, um, hopefully, you can all still hear me. Um, we're going to be using whole milk. Okay, there we go, just like that. Full cream, full, professor. Full cream, yes. Um, this is going to be an experiment for you. I'll, I'll explain this later on. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge you to act, experiment a little bit. Okay, so what you need to do with the milk, the milk must be warm okay so it don't it doesn't have to be um, an exact temperature but around about 30 to 40 degrees so this is cooled down slightly so you know we should be okay though um so um we're also going to be using something called white vinegar or distilled vinegar again this is an acid so you need to be very very careful with it and also when you're actually doing it make sure that you've got either a work surface that um um, uh, cover the work surface, okay, and make sure that you clean up after yourselves because um, your guardians will not be happy, all right? Um, what you're also going to need, you're going to need um, a two-cup measuring glass or measuring cup, just like this one, okay? Um, a teaspoon, like this one, a bigger spoon to, to um, scrape out the, um, the solids, which we're actually going to be extracting from the milk. Um, again, a microwave to warm the milk, I get, do not have the milk boiling, by the way. Um, um, it will not react well when you pour vinegar in it if it's boiling. Okay, so, so sorry, Professor. When you yeah. say warm milk, it means uh, they can touch and feel the warm yeah. recipient, right? Yes, that's it. Do not have the milk boiling, all right? Um, again, it will not react well um, to having an acid put into it, all right? And you may get something called spit back. And if you get spit back in your eyes, it won't, it, it'll be really, really bad. Okay. Well, not really, really bad, but it'll really, really hurt. Okay. Um, another thing that we're going to be needing is paper towels. All right. Um, paper towels. So they're there. Well, I'll show you how we're going to be used that in a second. Okay. A mesh strainer, which we're going to extract the solids out of the milk with. And um, if you need any help, uh, which I don't think you will do, um, an, an adult on hand just for them. Um, oh, sorry, you're all adults anyway. Um, but someone on hand just for the spare um, set of hands. Okay. Sorry, so, Professor. How much of milk? Um, it's about. It's around. Well, um, it's a. Um, uh, do you use cups as a measurement? Yes. Yes. Yeah, a, a cup. A cup. A but cup. this. This is all. Um, this is all just a ratio, okay? So, to one cup of milk, you would put four teaspoons of um, acid or okay. vinegar, okay? okay? And this can be expanded, uh, or um, expanded or contracted, so you can make more or less, okay? okay. It's entirely up to you. Okay, um, just double check. Uh, did everybody get it? All the the ingredients, if I can say that. Yes. And what we can do after, uh, Carl, uh, after you were done, if you can put the ingredients on the chat box, they can take notes if they missed it, something, or we can even send them by email so they can have all the list with the measures. Definitely. I think that will make their lives a little bit more easy. 
Yes, definitely. I will do that. I will do that. I've got it. I've got it right in front of me. I should have shared it earlier on. No, but... that's okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, what you can also do with this as well, um, you can also add um, food coloring to it. Um, so when we get to a certain stage, I'll let you know when um, when we get to that stage where you can actually add a little bit of food coloring to make it. Um, or make it more aesthetically pleasing if you'd like. Um, and you can make some really, really nice things out of it, okay? Excuse me, my glasses are really, really steaming up um, because it's really, really warm here. Okay, just give me one second. Right, okay, so let's get on with it, all right? So first of all, what we're going to need to do, um, you've got your kitchen towels. We need to stack around about, say, five or six sheets of kitchen towels just like that and we're going to be using this in a couple of minutes right the next thing that we're going to do we've got our cup of milk here like that okay i'm going to pop that into my mixing bowl just like that okay i'll move the camera around this slightly so you can actually see is that better can you um, can you see better yeah we can Excellent. Okay. So this mix milk's cooled down slightly. So I'm hoping it's actually going to work properly, but it'll be all right. So to that, that cup of milk, this is the smelly part now. Okay. Um, so to this milk, what we're going to add, we're going to add four teaspoons of acid or in this case, vinegar. Teaspoons? Teaspoons, yes. Okay. Okay, and put, yeah, I'm going to put the mask on, sorry. Excuse me one second. Oh. Can, you, <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, we can. <laughs> yeah, okay. Again, um, I've got a really, really weak stomach, and it absolutely stinks. Okay, I'm not getting any solids here, are we? I'm just going to add a little bit more vinegar to this. Um, because my milk's curled down. Okay. And then we'll just give that a quick mix up. And as you can see, it's now, you're now separating the solids or the proteins away from, uh, it's actually called the whey. Okay, so what we're actually doing in here, we're separating the curds, which is the solids or the proteins, uh, away from the whey, which is essentially just the, uh, the the water that's actually in milk. Okay, so oh, sorry that went through my mask. Uh, right, so give that a quick stir and just keep stirring it until you can actually see it separating, as you can see there, and it really doesn't look nice either. Okay, from that stage, what we're going to do, we're going to be using a fine strainer, just like this, and then a bigger bowl, so we can actually strain away the whey, and we're gonna keep the curd, or the solids, just like that. Whew. And it really, really does smell, okay, so, um, again, just make sure you check with your guardians first that, that you're okay to do it. And then you need to make sure that you drain away as much of the moisture as possible. Okay. And this is why we wear gloves. So I'll just drain that away. Just like that. It would actually work a little bit better if my milk was a little bit warmer than this, okay? So just make sure that your milk's nice and warm. And then from there, we'll get rid of this bit. And then move it onto the paper towel. Just like that, if you can all see that. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to pat this dry or get it as dry as possible. Oh, wow. It really does smell as well. 
and then I'll move this one more just to make sure it's nice and dry right we need to drain the reason you need to drain as much of this liquid out as possible essentially what happens is when when the plastic starts to dry the more moisture is in, is in the plastic itself the more that it will actually distort once it's drying okay so try your hardest to get as much of this out as possible use as much kitchen roll as you would as you need and sorry so, professor they can use yeah. it now um uh, yes you can but um again uh, you will have to bin it okay because it really smells um and i don't think uh, you'll be able to i don't think you'd want to use it again to be honest okay so forget yes it. Yeah, that's it. I I would personally just use this, uh, use kitchen roll because you can bake or kitchen towels because you can just basically bin it. Okay, right now you're at this stage, you've actually got a ball of casein plastic there. Okay, and this is the stage now. As you can see, it's still really really bitty. Okay, so what you need to do now, let me take this mask off because I can't breathe. So what, I don't know why I took the mask off. So what you need to do now, at this stage now, what you could actually do, you could add food coloring or any sort of coloring to this. And you just add a couple of drops. And what you need to do now is you just need to knead and knead and knead. And you need to form a, a solid ball. So what you're actually doing here, you're manipulating the molecules within the plastic and basically forming bondings or um the, it's actually called covalent bondings okay which is the basis of most polymers all right so the more you need and the more you need and the more you need like that the better it will actually become all right so from this stage now let me just try it off a little bit more oh my god it smells Um, I recommend as well while you're doing this, um, open a window, okay, to get rid of it. Have any of you, um, are any of you familiar with the way they make cheese? Anybody? Well, if you're not, this is essentially the way they make cheese as well, okay, but they use a different, um, they use a different catalyst to actually separate the curds and whey, okay. So, again, just keep kneading it, kneading it until it's one solid ball. So it's nice and smooth. Just like that. Okay. And again, right, so there you go. You've actually got a really nice ball of casein plastic. So what you can actually do from there now, this can be molded. So we take a bit off like that. We can mold this into... Right, and it just fell to pieces on me. Brilliant. Okay, and that, the reason it's fallen to pieces like that, okay, because I never just um, I never drained enough moisture out of it. I never drained enough of the vinegar off. Okay, um, but that's something that you need to do when you're actually doing it. this. Is going to be really, really, really quick. Okay, um, but when you're actually doing it yourselves, make sure that you drain as much of the vinegar off it as possible. Okay, you shouldn't really be able to smell vinegar, which I can now okay so again you've got yourself a little ball these can be rolled out so i haven't brought my rolling pin up but you can roll it out and then you can use something um called a cutty cutter a cookie cutter i should say cutty cutter um <laughs> and you can make anything that you want um you can mount these on um on necklaces you can do basically anything that you want with it um so excuse me really <clears throat> so there we go. I'm back, right? So, this is casein plastic, right? Um, believe it or not, this is still, this actually, this casein plastic is in, well, was in use really, really, really um, in massive amounts uh, during the 19th century, okay? Um, and during the 19th century, what they actually made, they, they used to make small items from this, like buttons, um, hair combs, and everything along them lines, okay? Um, as you can see, it's still quite bitty, right? 
So what I want you to do now, or when you have a go at this yourselves, right? I want you to have a go. Instead of using whole milk, or start with whole milk, as you should say. Start with whole milk. Make, um, make whatever you need to make out of it. But then what I want you to do, I want you to start experimenting a little bit. And use different milks. Um, so use semi skim use skim milks. Um, um, use different amounts of vinegar and see how that affects the actual end product. Okay? So essentially what, what's happened here is when you mix the vinegar with the milk or mix the mi vinegar with the heated milk, the milk curdled or separated into curds, the solids or the protein, okay? And they and the whey, which is the liquid or the moisture, the, the water that's actually in the milk. Um, the curds, are, again, are the fat or the casein protein from the milk. Um, they form together when you are ne actually kneading it. Um, they form together in chains known as polymers, all right? All, all plastics are polymers. Uh, the casein chains you formed in this experiment will harden into a tighter, well, into a, into casein plastic, which was again used um, um, in the 1900s, essentially, you know, for buttons and plastics and all that. Um, you could also, um, to, so again, try this with, um, with different types of milk. Um, I actually did this with semi skim milk. And um, it was really, really strange. Where this one um, actually separates and is like um, granular, if you'd like. When I used semi-skim milk, um, it formed like a rubber, like a rubbery substance, um, which was really, really strange. Okay, but again, I'm going to challenge you to actually um, 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 experiment on this yourselves. And also, um, when you actually do experiment it, if you do make something with it, I want to see it. All right, um, so <laughs> we're nowhere near Valentine's Day, but you may even be able to make something um, for Valentine's Day with it, like a little love heart, whatever, whatever you like. Okay, so let's go into the science behind it. Okay, a polymer, which I've just explained to you, is a long chain of hundreds or thousands of tiny, tiny molecules. Uh, polymers are generally uh, very large molecules made up of tiny smaller molecules all linked together using something called, as I've already explained, covalent bonding, okay? Um, the plastic you made, or we've made, is an interesting type of polymer made up of chains of casein, casein from milk, okay? Sometimes in order to be useful, polymers must be cross-linked with chemicals. In the case of natural rubber, for example, uh, the chains of rubber, let me just take this mask off because it's getting in the way. Um, so in the, um, for the rubber example, the chains of the rubber, uh, which are a natural polymer, come from a rubber plant, okay, are cross-linked with sulfur in a process called vulcanization, where the chains of the polymer are connected together into one larger molecule. This makes the rubber... Um, Mass massively more durable, more flexible, and less brittle, and able to withstand heat. Um, uh, well, more better to withstand heat than um, the natural rubber. So, in fact, if you actually get a block of natural rubber itself, you can actually just break the natural rubber. If, um, if you've all seen rubber degrade, um, it just basically just disintegrates. That's essentially it. Um, it stops um, the. It naturally degrades and removes the vulcanization, essentially, and that's what natural rubber would be like. Okay. Um, so um, right. Okay. Uh, there are lots. Of, um, there are loads of polymers in the world. Some are natural, and some are made up by made by humans or synthetic. Okay. Um, uh, there are a few examples of this. Um, some common polymers, uh, for example, um, you know, they, they, they all have different properties. For example, um, a plastic bag, that's a polymer, okay? But that's flexible and that can move. But then you've got plastic plates and CDs that if you actually, um, if you brought, they would not bend, they just snap, 
okay so they've all got different properties and the way they do that is through the bonds how they bond together okay um so this um again i've mentioned covalent bonding so they covalent bondings they will form something called mdpes or hdpes which is high density polyurethanes and that sort of thing so we see them in pipes plastic pipes water pipes in the ground okay you will also see polymers in the clothes that we wear for example nylon um, nylon um, that's a polymer again or like a plastic um, which is extruded out and um, to form um, just ordinary strands and that sort of thing which can be weaved together to make clothes this is also the case with other um what's that called it's not called um i can't remember the name of it uh I forgot, right? Um, it's also um, uh, like vinyls and that sort of thing, which is again a polymer which we use every day. Um, so, you know, there's a many, many um, interesting polymers. Uh, sorry, I'm blurting this out, but I'm trying to get it out as, as quick as possible. There are many other interesting polymers uh, you might find in your home. Liquid absorbent crystals, no, the sodium polycarbonate. Uh, polycrylate okay um they are a material found inside of disposable nappies or diapers if you like uh, that's a polymer um this uh, obviously this special polymer can soak up loads of liquids or lots of liquids making it perfect to keep um uh, baby's bums dry and um, bathing suits and toothbrush bristles are typically made from man-made material called nylon as i've already explained which is also a polymer known as a poly a polyamide okay i'm going to struggle saying some of these words lenses for eyeglasses are often made from durable polymer called polycarbonate or polycarbonate sheets these are polycarbonates really 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 hard um but if i tried to bend these they just snap so again different properties for different purposes um you've i'm sure you've all heard of the way um of, of pdc before which stands for polyvinyl chloride, okay? And um, PVC is used for many things like shower curtains and waterproof materials. Even credit cards are made up of this type of PVC. Uh, glue, paint, varnishes, and sealants are again all polymers and they are all made through a process like we have just performed now, okay? Um, and again, different chemicals are added to it to them to actually add different properties either stiffness so it doesn't it doesn't bend or so they can be flexible okay um i hope that was all interesting i know it was really really quick and i do apologize i would have liked to have actually done it along would you perform this experiment alongside me but again i couldn't guarantee your safety so um just have a go of it yourself okay but remember open a window because it really stinks all right. Again, um, it's, it's, is that okay, everybody? Did everyone get that? Has anyone got any questions for me? Is everyone there? It's okay. Is that, is that all right? Did you did you understand everything I was saying? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are you gonna have a go? Are you gonna have a go? Go doing it. So. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna have a go? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know why? <laughs> Is it because of the smell? It's a good job we haven't got smelly vision here. Has anyone got any questions for me? I know that was really, really quick, but it's because basically we weren't doing it together. So, gente, alguma questão, alguma pergunta, Professor Carl? Desculpa, Giovanna, pode. Gi, não estamos conseguindo te escutar, tá cortando o seu som. Tá, eu não tô, a gente não tá conseguindo te escutar, tá cortando muito. Uh, ainda não conseguimos, Gi. Se você quiser colocar no chat, Giovana, e mandar pelo chat, porque realmente acho que alguma coisa de conexão tá cortando um pouquinho. Tá, ela falou que vai escrever aqui. Enquanto a Giovanna escreve, mais alguém tem alguma dúvida que queira compartilhar? Professor, how can what we what we can make with this that we 
will create. You can make absolutely anything with this. Um, as, I, as I said earlier, it was, it was used primarily in the 1900s. We don't really use it now um, because it's, um, it's actually a biodegradable plastic. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we don't use it now because it degrades really, really quickly. But in the 1900s, they actually made buttons from it, buttons, hair combs, anything really small. Okay, so you can basically do anything like that with it, but it's got to be really small. Um, the reason for that is if you make anything um, really big, once the moisture starts to actually evaporate from it, so it starts to harden, mm -hmm. it will shrink and deform. Okay, so the smaller the item, the less water that's actually involved in it, and the less it'll actually deform and um, it or crack and that sort of thing. So anything small. Um, so I would have a little go at making um, beads for um, a little necklace or um, roll it out and make a little, you, you can do basically anything with it. You can make a lot of things with it. Um, but it's, it's really, it's really good. I did, unfortunately, I did, I weren't going to mention this, but I'm going to, I did have things that I'd actually made from it. Um, but I was complaining to my wife about my desk being untidy and she decided to do me a favor and come and tidy my desk and she binned it all. <laughs> so I'm really disappointed. Um, I had food color and everything on it. And you look, that, where I said I made, you make love hearts and stuff like that, I actually made a little love, love heart and it was really nice. And she put it in the bin. So, Valentine's uh, Day is in Sunday in Brazil, Professor. It, uh, it, really? Yes. Oh right, there you go. Um, you can make your you can make your sweetheart some um, some nice love hearts um, out of milk. Wait, be really good. Um, yeah, thanks. Professor, no problem. I have, I have Giovanna's question here. She she asking, is there another material we can use to make other kinds of plastic at home? Ooh, nothing that I would actually say yes. Go and do it. Um, because you're moving into the realms of really, really strong alkalis, um, the likes of bleach and that sort of thing. So yes, you can, but um, I wouldn't recommend it um, because you can start generating some really, really nasty um, fumes and which can really, really damage you, um, like um, cyanide gas and that sort of thing. So please don't <laughs> use use vinegar and milk only. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, how can I say? Yes. Um, I, uh, teacher, I don't understand on the, of the ingredients. All right, okay. Well, what I'll do, I'll do. Uh, what I'll do, I'll pop these in the um, chat box now. Um, so you've got you're using white vinegar or something called distilled vinegar. Okay, do not use malt vinegar. Um, um, it, it, what it does, it, malt vinegar has actually got solid particles in it itself, and that's what gives it the color, and um, it, it, it just wouldn't work. Okay, so white vinegar, um, you're going to be using that as the acid. Uh, I'll, I'll put this in the chat box as I'm actually saying it. Okay, so that's the acid. Um, you're going to use um, a full fat milk or um, so start off with a full fat milk, um, so whole milk, whole cream milk if you'd like. Um, um, but then um, once you've actually done that, start experimenting with some different types of milk. Um, so it's like skimmed, semi-skimmed and that sort of thing. Um, what you will find, um, I'll give you a little bit of a hint what you'll find. You'll find that the actual material that you create is just slightly different in properties. Do you remember I was saying to you before about um, um, the add different chemicals to the polymers to actually make them um, flexible or solid and that sort of thing. Um, this will actually, uh, using different types of milk will simulate that. Okay, um, so it'll make it a little bit more stringy. You'll get less material from it because there's less protein in it. Um, because um, you basically, when you skim the milk, you take a lot of the protein out. Um, so um, that's the milk. So we'll start off with whole milk. Um, the next thing is just equipment, i.e. Uh, teaspoons um, for stirring, a microwave to warm the milk. So the milk, remember, has got to be between 30 and 40 degrees, not boiling. Do not have the milk boiling. All right, um, that's a major, major no-no. Okay, so there's the ingredients up there. Um, really, really simple. Four, four teaspoons of white vinegar to one cup of milk. 
So four teaspoons, that's the ratio. Two one cup. Okay, teacher, thank you. No problem at all. So that's in the um, in the actual um, chat now. Um, and again, another experiment I'd like you to actually perform is use different different amounts of vinegar and see what happens when you use different amounts of vinegar. So, um, for example, um, do the whole milk with four teaspoons, and then try doubling the amount of vinegar in it, uh, or the amount of acid you actually add to it, and see how it affects the properties of the um, of the um, the plastic that you're actually going to um, develop. Okay, um, it will alter the pro the properties of it. Okay, anybody else? Any other questions for me? Professor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, uh, I'm thinking here. Can we use um, powdered egg milk and for the experience? Just for. Um, mm. Sorry. So, uh, did you say powdered milk? Yes. Yes. Ooh, you would have to rehydrate it first. I, I'm, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But essentially, when you dehydrate milk like that, essentially all you're doing is removing the um, the moisture, which is like to this. Um, sorry, you can't see that. All you're doing is removing that from the milk. So what I would do, I would actually rehydrate it first. So get it looking like um, like it's, it is milk. And then add your vinegar or your acid to it and see what happens. That'll be really interesting. So um, yes, do that and let me know how it goes um, because that'll be a really, really interesting um, experiment, that really interesting. Okay, okay, thank so you. Give it a go, give it a go. I will try. Um, not brilliant, excellent. Anybody else? I've took my gloves off and I've been messing with it and it, my hands stink. Anybody? Yeah, now really, uh, sorry. No, that's okay, Professor, go ahead. Now, I was just going to apologize for this not being an interactive demo again. Um, I'm really, really sorry, but I, I couldn't with good conscience, conscience sorry, um, allow you to do it without goggles and that sort of thing, just in case you hate yourselves. Um, and I, again, I'm really, really sorry this has been this quick. It's not supposed to go this quickly. Um, but again, it's not, it's not been fully interactive. So, Professor, I yeah, sorry, you don't, I don't, sorry to interrupt you, but you don't need to be sorry at all. Uh, the students are enjoying here. I'm getting so many messages on WhatsApp. So right. the student love it that. Um, and I just want to, uh, Camila is going to, to say a little bit more about the, the safety, which is very important. Hugely important, hugely important across everything that you do. Always make sure you protect yourselves, okay? Um, you will even get times where people are asking you to do things. Um, if you don't feel safe doing it, don't do it, okay? Just say no. All right, uh, massively important. Just highlight that I would do in Portuguese because it's a little bit easier so everybody can understand. Então, pessoal, é, essa parte de segurança, é, como o professor falou, o Diego também reforçou, é super importante. Se vocês não tiverem os óculos, a luva e a máscara, é, não façam esse experimento em casa. É importante que vocês sempre pensem na segurança de vocês primeiro, né? Um, então, se vocês tiverem, e também, qualquer dúvida em relação ao processo de como fazer, conversa com o Diego, o Diego vai falar comigo, eu posso falar com o professor também, para vocês não começarem é, esse experimento tendo nenhuma dúvida uh, de, do que vocês vão precisar fazer, né? do passo a passo que vocês vão precisar seguir. E uma coisa super importante que o Diego falou... É, também é para vocês que estão agora tendo mais esse contato com as aulas, com as mock classes, com o professor e estão pensando em aplicar para a universidade fora, é, isso serve como portfólio de vocês. Então, é, façam, gravam um vídeo, mandem para a gente, a gente consegue até avaliar uma possível bolsa de estudos é, com esse material também. Então, é uma coisa que está ao nosso alcance porque a gente trabalha diretamente com o admission das universidades. Então, se vocês estão pensando, começando até essa ideia, né, de aplicar para uma universidade fora, manda o um vídeo para a gente, conversa com o Diego, o Diego vai falar comigo também, para a gente conseguir passar todas essas ideias para vocês e como funciona e como são as bolsas e como está dessa parte 
acadêmica e de documentação funciona também, tá? É, Diego, do you have something else that you want to say? Uh, alguém tem mais alguma dúvida? Acho que o, o chat box aqui já está sem nenhuma mensagem nova. É. Uh, não sei se, se o Carl quer fechar, aí eu encerro. Carl, do you want to do, do you want to say something else or can we just make the closure? Yeah, yeah, we can, we can just close. Um, so uh, uh, it's going to be our last session on Wednesday, which is a bit disappointing for me, if I'm honest, because um, I really, really enjoy these sessions. Um, so the next one that we're actually going to be doing is going to be mechanical engineering, um, where we're going, I did have an example of it, but um, we're going to be making a, an elastic band powered car, okay? I'm sure you've all seen these before. Um, but ours is going to have a difference. Ours is actually going to have gears, okay? So we're going to have a few, well, I'm going to leave you to experiment to see what the different gears, how they work, how, they, um, how they're how used for mechanical aids. So essentially, um, you know, um, easy lifting and that sort of thing. So it's going to be a really interesting one next time. Great. So thank you very much, Professor. Thank you for this amazing experimental. Um, Thank you. It's, it's very, very good. I was just talking to Camila here. We're going to try at home as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so it was very, very joyful. And you always is a, is a, is a, a master. So thank you very much. Uh, okay. Gente, então, como a Camila falou, como o professor falou, como eu falei no começo, segurança sempre em primeiro lugar. Tenham todos os equipamentos primeiro, e aí vocês podem fazer. Gravem os, os vídeos de vocês praticando, de vocês fazendo tudo certinho, mandem para mim, eu encaminho com a Camila, converso com a Camila e a gente vê aí um futuro, futuro potencial aí de bolsa para vocês, tá bom? É, dois recadinhos, então como o professor falou, semana que vem vai ser a última aula com o professor Carl, depois nas outras próximas semanas vão ter mais aulas que a gente vai falando para vocês. É, já, ele, amanhã mesmo ele já vai passar a lista de materiais e o que, que vocês já podem ir adiantando, mas deixa eu já avisar vocês, Três lápis, dois elásticos de dinheiro e um pedaço de uma caixa de papelão. Pedaço, uma tampa de caixa de sapato, qualquer coisa que vocês tiverem aí de papelão. Guardem já, já vão separando, amanhã encaminho tudo certinho. Outro recadinho, quarta-feira, às seis horas da tarde, no webinar uh, do programa do My Way, nós vamos ter a Laura Sogliani falando sobre as universidades na Alemanha. Então, vocês vão ver ali as oportunidades que vocês têm de estudar na Alemanha por menos de 150 euros por semestre, ou até mesmo de graça. Então, assim, não percam o webinar dessa semana, que vai ser bem legal, tá bom? Então, galerinha, foi isso. Muito obrigado pela participação de todos, e eu espero ver vocês todos na quarta-feira, às três horas da tarde. Muito obrigado. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye now.